Some businesses, especially knowledge workers who provide a service, they can get lured into a slight variation of the artisan trap that I call the family affair. And this is best illustrated using a somewhat embarrassing example from my college days. You'll recognize this story right away because I can almost guarantee you've experienced it or someone in your family or close circle of friends has. This video is going to be just a little bit longer than usual, but it's gonna be fun for you at least. For me, well, let's just say, I hope you can learn from my mistakes. All right, here we go. At the end of my first year at college, I actually fell and broke my ankle when I was climbing a 20 foot boulder in Colorado. In case you're wondering, I don't recommend it. I was gonna be in a cast or brace for most of the summer and this left me with a pretty big problem. You see, the two previous summers, I had worked for a local roofing company and needless to say, roofing and broken ankles, well, they don't play well together. I was broke and I needed money to pay for school. And so I had to do something. Fortunately, the answer came in the form of a job opportunity, selling kitchen knives. Now, I was left with no other choice, so I got to work. And honestly, things started off well, sort of. I, my first sale was to my parents. <laughs> I needed them to pay for my sample set. So we struck a deal that I would pay, that they would pay for them, and I would use the knives for my presentations, and then we would split the knives at the end. Buoyed by my newfound salesmanship, I was ready to go. So what did I do? I called up my aunts and I sold most of them knives. Now, you and I know that their purchase probably had less to do with the quality of my presentation and more to do with their desire to help me out. And while I wasn't really raking in the dough yet, I could see this was going to be good. Now, once I ran out of ants, I started calling my neighbors and then I called my high school teachers and I called my friends' moms and I sold to many of them. I was climbing the ladder to knife selling stardom, but then I ran out of family and friends to call. And I came to the painful realization that while I had found profitability early, it did nothing to help me find a profitable and sustainable market. Actually, what it had done, it had distracted me and blinded me to what the real problem was all along. You see, I had failed to reach sustainability because I failed to find a repeatable way to sell to people who didn't already know and trust me. You see, I spent all of my time developing and nurturing sales to those who knew me that I never took the time to build the capacity to sell to those who didn't know me. In my case, I was lucky. The summer was ending soon and I had barely made enough for school. So I rolled up my knives, I gave my dad his, and I went back to school. But for most business owners, the family affair, this trap is rarely this kind. You see, your friends and family and colleagues, they probably don't represent a sustainable market. I've seen many founders start a business on the evidence that they were able to make a quick few sales to the people that they knew or to references of the people that they knew. Thinking they've found a market, they quit their job and they go all in just to find out when those contracts end that they've done nothing at all to truly establish a sustainable market. So here's the moral of the story. Make sure your processes are built and proven to enable you to sell not only to those who know you, but to those who don't know you yet. Now in the next video, I'm gonna tell you about another brutal trap for businesses that's called the false finish line. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it.